uBlock Origin is one of the most popular and effective browser extensions ever created. With over 40 million active users across Chrome, Firefox, and other browsers, it has become synonymous with ad blocking and online privacy. But not many people know that it's more than a simple ad blocker. It's actually a very powerful, wide spectrum content blocker. One that can go so far as to protect users from covert crypto mining to dangerous malware sites. And unlike many other extensions that bog down your computer, it actually takes up less CPU and memory resources, greatly improving the browsing experience for so many of its users. There's just one problem though. It works too well. And that's why big tech, specifically those that depend on ads for their revenue, hate it. They've tried to compete against it, undermine it, and weaken it. But they just can't destroy it. So their remaining hopes are that you either don't know about it so you won't use it, or you don't know which one is the real one, so you end up using a far inferior extension. Will they succeed? Only you can decide. This is a little known story of how uBlock Origin went from a hobby project to being the most popular browser extension in the world. In the early 2010s, intrusive ads and trackers were overwhelming the web. What once consisted of simple banner ads had evolved into aggressive pop-ups, auto-playing videos, and hidden data collectors that followed users across the web. Despite the increase in internet speeds, web browsing had descended into a slow, annoying, and invasive experience. At that time, Adblock Plus was the dominant solution to the problem. Although it was slow and resource-heavy, millions of users were willing to tolerate its shortcomings rather than subject themselves to the never-ending digital onslaught in their browsers. But their attitudes changed when Adblock Plus introduced an acceptable ads program to allow certain advertisers to bypass their filters for a fee. This created a conflict of interest as the ad blocker was essentially being paid to not block some ads. Many users felt betrayed by what they perceived as a compromise of principles and longed for a more transparent and efficient replacement to Adblock Plus. Raymond Hill, a Canadian software developer known online as Gore Hill, was one of them. But Hill wanted something better than an Adblock Plus, a lightweight, no compromise tool that puts user control first. So Hill developed a browser extension called HTTP Switchboard to act as a prototype and proof of concept for what he wanted to achieve. Unlike Adblock Plus, which was primarily designed to block ads, HTTP Switchboard took a different approach to content blocking, acting more like a firewall within the browser itself. With a matrix-based interface, it gave users granular control over which elements could load on a page, scripts, cookies, iframes, and more. HTTP Switchboard was powerful but somewhat complex, appealing mostly to tech-savvy users. Hill realized that there was a clear demand for something simpler and more accessible, yet equally effective. Recognizing this, Hill eventually split HTTP Switchboard into two separate projects, Umatrix and uBlock. Umatrix retained the advanced granular control of HTTP Switchboard, appealing to tech-savvy users who wanted precise control over their browsing experience. uBlock, on the other hand, aimed to be more accessible to everyday users with a simplified interface while still delivering high-performance content blocking. While both extensions gained followings, uBlock ultimately emerged as the more popular option due to its balance of power and usability. Umatrix remained niche and was eventually discontinued, but its DNA lived on in uBlock's advanced features. As uBlock's popularity skyrocketed, Hill found himself overwhelmed by the increasing demands of maintaining such a rapidly growing open source project. In April 2015, seeking relief from the pressures of daily maintenance and user support, Hill handed over the main uBlock repository to another developer, Chris Aljudi. But he didn't abandon his creation entirely though. He maintained his own fork of uBlock, naming it uBlock Origin, to distinguish it from Aljudi's version. His plan was simple, continue developing the extension as a hobby while leaving the day-to-day -day maintenance to Aljudi. 
Initially, this arrangement seemed promising. However, Al Judi soon took Ublock in a controversial direction. He created a dedicated website, ublock.org, soliciting donations without clear transparency, and also started removing some of Hill's original credits and acknowledgements from Ublock's Wikipedia page. Furthermore, Al Judi's version of Ublock was also receiving few updates and seemed to be stagnating technically. Hill and the community's trust in Al Judi's Ublock quickly eroded. Users and developers alike turned back to Hill's fork, Ublock Origin, recognizing it as the authentic and trustworthy ad blocking tool that is the true successor to Ublock's original vision. By late 2015, just months after the handover, Hill's Ublock Origin publicly disavowed any ties to Al Judi's Ublock, clearly stating that Ublock.org was unrelated and unsupported. What had begun as a neat division of labor had become a complete fork in both code and philosophy. Under Hill's continued stewardship, Ublock Origin flourished technically. He used network filtering to block requests before they loaded. It consumed a fraction of the memory of its competitors, a critical advantage as websites became more complex. But Hill didn't stop there. He added features like a dynamic filtering panel, allowing users to tweak blocking rules on the fly. Advanced users could even write custom rules for their specific blocking needs. Despite these added capabilities, uBlock Origin still remained simple enough for casual users to just install and forget. But that's not all. Amazingly, the benefits of using uBlock Origin go far beyond its features. By default, it stops trackers, crypto miners, and fingerprinting scripts, tools that harvest data and compromise privacy. Studies estimate that using an ad blocker like uBlock Origin can reduce data usage by up to 40%, a major boon for mobile users and low bandwidth regions. And another unknown benefit? Its environmental impact is staggering. Ads and trackers force browsers to download extra code, consuming energy. Researchers found that the use of uBlock Origin would mean less energy consumption, and thus a reduction of coal-fired electricity as well. As users migrated to uBlock Origin and Mars, the original uBlock under Al Judi's management gradually faded into obscurity. It was eventually acquired by AdBlock and ultimately added acceptable ads as one of its features. The development community had voted with their contributions and the user base had voted with their installations. uBlock Origin and not uBlock was now the true successor to the original uBlock extension and a thorn in the flesh of one of the world's biggest tech giants. uBlock Origin is now a threat that needed to be crushed. In late 2018, Google announced a controversial change that would be rolling out to Chrome's extension platform called Manifest V3 or MV3 in short. A browser extension platform is a set of rules and tools that programmers use to create small software programs called extensions that add features or functionalities to web browsers. Google promoted MV3 as a security upgrade over the existing MV2, which extensions had relied on. Many privacy advocates and developers saw things very differently. They criticized the move as a veiled attempt, partly aimed at undermining ad blocking and privacy extensions like uBlock Origin. MV3's changes would considerably restrict the capabilities of browser extensions, particularly content blockers, with the most significant change being the replacement of the Web Request API with the Declarative Net Request API. The Web Request API allowed extensions to intercept and modify network requests in real time, giving them fine-grained control over what content was loaded. The Declarative Net Request API, on the other hand, would be less powerful limiting extensions to using a predefined set of rules to block or allow requests, and thus making it more difficult to block complex ads and trackers. Hill publicly expressed deep concerns. He noted that the limitations imposed by MV3 would make it impossible to implement many of uBlock Origin's most powerful features, thus crippling effective content blocking and undermining user control and privacy. In response to Google's MV3 proposal, Computing browsers took different stances. Firefox and Opera committed to maintaining the Web Request API despite adopting other aspects of MV3, essentially promising a refuge for the full-featured uBlock origin. 
Other Chromium-based browsers like Brave and Vivaldi also sought ways to maintain support for powerful content blocking, positioning themselves as privacy-friendly alternatives to Chrome. As Google slowly began rolling out MV3 in phases, Hill faced a difficult decision. Instead of surrendering, he countered. Rather than compromising uBlock Origin's core functionality, he created uBlock Origin Lite, a new extension specifically designed to work within the constraints of MV3's restrictive framework while still offering robust protection. uBlock Origin Lite necessarily sacrificed some capabilities of uBlock Origin. The dynamic filtering system was significantly reduced. Cosmetic filtering was more limited and the ability to use complex custom filters was curtailed. However, it still offered better ad and tracker blocking than many alternatives within the Chrome ecosystem. More importantly, uBlock Origin Lite managed to preserve the core philosophy of Hill's vision, efficient, uncompromised content blocking that respects user choice and privacy without commercial interest. It remained free, open source, and maintained the same no-nonsense approach to tracking and advertising. Meanwhile, the full-featured uBlock Origin continues to thrive on Firefox and other browsers that maintain support for the Web Request API. As of early March 2025, Chrome's MV3 rollout is in full force, and uBlock Origin is automatically disabled on existing Chrome browsers. Thanks to Hill's foresight and leadership, affected users are able to fall back on uBlock Origin Lite for their privacy and content blocking needs. Big Tech's bill attempt to destroy uBlock Origin not only failed, but failed spectacularly. Because their actions had awoken more users to the need for extensions like uBlock Origin and uBlock Origin Lite, as a means to challenge the data for free content bargain that fuels much of the web. Today, uBlock Origin and uBlock Origin Lite both represent the gold standard when it comes to browser extensions for content blocking and privacy protection. Raymond Hill still oversees development, vetting every code change and making sure users will always have the choice to decide what web content is acceptable for themselves. His actions forever changing how millions of users experience the web, proving that sometimes the most powerful tools are those built not for profit, but on principle. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.